Hi guys, uh, this is Mrs. Taranjo with the Citizenship Academy. I am going to be transitioning to doing something a little bit different for ELA. Um, we are actually going to be breaking away from doing our um, skills and we're going to be working back into our CKLA uh, that we were doing a few months ago. Um, Ms. Badman will be teaching listening and learning and I'll be teaching skills um, from CKLA. Uh, we're going to actually do a new topic, and it's called the solar system, which I'm really excited about. Now, each day it's going to look a little bit different. It's not going to be the same layout as my other videos. Uh, for today's, luckily, it is a pretty easy um, video. What we're going to be doing is um, we're going to read a chapter from our readers. I know you don't have your readers. That's okay. I have a digital version of it, so you'll be able to see the text um, as I read through it. I'm going to ask some comprehension questions that you'll be able to, I'll probably pause for like 30 seconds and let you answer. And then at the end of the um, chapter for today, um, I have some comprehension questions. Typically these would be in your workbooks, um, but since we don't have our workbooks, you're going to complete it on a Google Forms quiz. So we're going to go ahead and get started on a new topic. As I said, we're going to be learning about the solar system, which I think is really cool to learn about. Because each year that you go to school, you're going to add more on to what you learn about the solar system. So it's really cool to get new information. So let's start reading the chapter in our, our reader. Move my video. Okay. So the chapter we're going to read is the sun, earth, and our solar system. Now remember, I'm going to be asking some questions throughout. Um, so if you have... Um, so be sure to answer the questions. I'm not going to give you very much time because you don't have to write anything down. So the first question I'm going to ask before um, is, what is the sun made of and how does it keep us warm? So I'm going to pause in a little, in a few paragraphs, and we're going to talk about, and I'll um, give you guys a second to answer that question. So remember, what is the sun made of and how does it keep us warm? Look at the sky at noon. What do you see? If it is not cloudy, you will see the sun shining brightly in the sky. The sun provides energy, both light and heat energy. The sun's light and heat give life to plants and animals. Without the sun, earth would be freezing cold. Have you ever wondered what the sun is made of or why it gives us so much light, light and heat? Remember, it's really important that we read the captions on these pages as well. The sun gives us light and heat energy. Clo a close-up of the sun. You may be surprised to know that the sun is a star. It is, in fact, the closest star to Earth. It is made up of different hot gases. How hot? A hot summer day on Earth is 100 degrees. On the sun, it is 10,000 degrees. The sun stays hot all that hot all the time. The sun's gases create the light and heat energy it gives off. So I'm going to pause for about 30 seconds, and I want you to answer those question, the questions that I had given you. What is the sun made of, and how does it keep us warm? I'll give you about 30 seconds to answer that. Okay, so the question, first part of the question is what is the sun made of? If we look back in the text right here, it actually states it is made up of different hot gases. So that's actually what the sun is made of. And the second part of the question is how does it keep us warm? Well, there's two parts that um, kind of said this. For one, it says that it stays hot all the time like that. It's always that temperature. Our temperatures change a lot. Um, throughout the earth, but um, depending obviously where the sun sets and things like that, but the sun is always 10,000 degrees, um, so I would not want to go there. And then the second part is the gases are what create that heat and energy light. Um, so the, the sun is actually a big ball of gas. It looks like it's something a little bit thicker. Um, it looks like it's like a planet, but it's actually made up of gases, and those gases give off the light and heat that we're known for for the sun. So the next question um, I want you to think about is, does the sun move around the earth or does the earth move around the sun? Okay. okay. Long ago, people believed that the sun moved around earth. This seemed to make sense. 
Each morning at the start of the day, the sun rose in the east. At the end of the day, the sun set in the west, exactly opposite from where it had come from, came from. To explain this change, people said the sun moved around Earth. But now we know that this is not what really happens. The sun does not move around Earth. It is the Earth that moves around the sun. This one I'm not going to give you pretty much much time on because it basically said it in the last sentence. So the question was, does the sun move around the Earth or does the Earth move around the sun? Well, the last sentence in this says that the Earth moves around the sun. So right here is an example of the planets orbiting the sun. These planets all shift around. So the sun doesn't move at all. These planets actually orbit around it. Okay. The sun is the center of a group of eight planets. All of these planets, including Earth, circle or orbit around the sun. So when you hear the word orbit, what I mean, it's basically circling. The sun, planets, and other objects in the space that orbit the sun are called the solar system. The word solar has the Latin word, root word sol, which means the sun. Everything in the solar system relates to the sun. So before I start the next page, what are two ways that the earth moves? So when we're reading through this, I want you to look for what are two ways that the earth moves. Our planet earth moves in two ways. We have just learned that earth circles around the sun. It takes about 365 days, which is one year, for Earth to orbit the Sun. Earth also moves by spinning or rotating on its axis. It is in this spinning that makes the day and night on Earth and the motion of the Sun across the sky from sunrise to sunset. It takes one day for Earth to make one complete rotation on its axis. As Earth rotates and spins, different parts of its face the Sun. When the part facing the sun gets sunlight, it is daytime on that side of Earth. That, the part that faces away from the sun gets no sunlight. So on that side of Earth, it is nighttime. Did you know that when it is daytime where you, we live, it is nighttime on the other side of the Earth? Earth spins on its axis on the side of the Earth facing the sun. It is daytime. On the side facing away from the sun, it is nighttime. So I'm going to give you a second. And what are the two ways that the Earth um, spins or moves. Okay. So I don't have my globe like I normally do at school, which kind of stinks, but I got my little ladybug that I'm going to use as an example as my sun or as my earth. So earth rotates in two different ways. So for one, it rotates around the sun. So that means this little earth goes around the sun. Okay. Like, so pretending this, it's hard to do the finger. There you go. Now, it also rotates itself. So, it takes, for the, for the Earth to make its way around the sun, it takes 365 days, which is a year. It takes one year for it to come all the way around. Now, it also rotates on itself. So, that means it actually spins like this. And if you notice, I have it at a little tilt. It's on its axis. When it means it's on its axis, it means it's on its side. Now, it's not completely on its side. It's at an angle, and it actually rotates in that way. So not only is the sun going around the, the, or the earth going around the sun, it's also spinning on itself. So it's just spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. So it's a lot to process. But when we are facing the sun, that's when it's daytime for us. So when you see it's nighttime, the sun's not disappearing. The sun is just moving on, or is facing away from us. Okay. Um, so one more question I'm going to ask. So how does Earth's tilt produce seasons? So as I said, our Earth is on its axis, which is a tilt. So as I read the next page, I want you to think about what, um, how does it create seasons? When Earth is tilted on its axis towards the sun, it is spring and summer. When Earth is tilted on its axis away from the sun, it is fall and winter. 
When Earth rotates on its axis, it is tilted. At certain times of the year, one part of Earth is tilted toward the sun. The sunlight is more direct and it feels hotter. For people living on this part of Earth, it is summer. For people living on the part of Earth tilted away from the sun, there is less sunlight and it is winter. So when it is summertime for us, there are people living on the other parts of Earth where it is winter. So the fact that Earth is tilted on its axis is what creates the seasons of the year. So I'll give you about 30 seconds to answer, how does the tilt create seasons? So I kind of rotated this so you can see it a little bit better. It's a little bit clearer. So as you can tell, the earth is tilted in this picture. As you can tell where the sun is, is directly towards it is where the summertime is. But the sun can't hit the other side here. And because the sun isn't so directly here, it's actually wintertime. So that's why on our side of the earth it might be summer, but the opposite side's actually winter. Same thing goes for right now. So right now in Syracuse, it is springtime. And with springtime on our end, that actually means that the other side of the earth is experiencing fall. This is a really cool thing to understand. So that is our reader for today. Um, what I'm going to have you do next is um, complete the exit ticket that goes along with the lesson. Um, if you need to rewatch the video to reread the text, please feel free to do so. It'll help you. I know it's really good to go back to the text. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow to continue on learning about the solar system. Bye, guys.